Welcome to Entrepreneurs Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs. Hey, John Sanmez here. Just want to take a second to tell you about a tool that I am really excited about. I've recently switched all of my email marketing over to a tool called Drip, and I couldn't be happier. I created a course, an email course, about how to create a blog that boosts your career, and so far, I've gotten a ton of signups from it, way more than I expected. Not only that, but the engagement level of the people that are signing up is huge, and then at the end of the course, I'm getting big conversion rates, which is something that I really need in order to sell my products, and this is something that's extremely helpful to any entrepreneur or entreprogrammer out there. The reason why Drip works so well is because it's specifically built for bootstrappers. It's email marketing for bootstrappers. And this is really why I switched over and why I'm finding it so effective. If you want to get started with Drip, you can get started today. Just go to gettrip.com forward slash entreprogrammers. Once again, that's getdrip.com forward slash entreprogrammers. And when you sign up, you can get an email mini course created for you. They'll actually do this for you. So if you're not sure how to do this, if you have a few blog posts or an ebook, they can get that started for you, which is makes it super simple. And you can start getting those benefits today and not tomorrow. They also have all the kind of marketing automation rules that you would want, tagging, much better than a lot of the other major automation players. And they integrate with things like Stripe, PayPal, Leadpages, Chargeify, Gumroad, tons of tons of great features in there. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Go to getdrip.com forward slash entreprogrammers. Take care. This episode of the Entree Programmers is brought to you in part by the Telerik platform at telerik.com slash platform. The Telerik platform allows developers to build, connect, test, and deploy cross-platform mobile applications using nearly any approach, web, hybrid, or native. With tools like the App Builder to create mobile apps with HTML and JavaScript, control suites for Windows, Android, and iOS, and powerful management tools like Telerik Analytics and App Manager, you're sure to find what you need. With powerful tools of the Telerik platform, the UI tools, and so much more that it provides, you will be able to create outstanding user experiences. So check it out and try the Telerik platform today at Telerik.com slash platform. All right, we're live. All right. <laughs> Derek right. deferred this week. First thing we got to ask is whether or not I'm singing Let It Go. Oh, I didn't even... Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to go check <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, I, I think oh, we gosh. had a few additional, but what I'm... Was the- what was that right again? It was uh, it was a minimum of how many? Yeah, we need we need at least ten new ones. Otherwise, you're gonna have to suffer with me singing. Look, I actually put a <laughs> sticker on my MacBook. Oh my gosh, you defaced it! <laughs> Whoa, simple programmer. Tim Cook is gonna show up at your house. Have you guys seen mine? How's this gonna work? <laughs> Derek just... I think Derek just. <laughs> It's something bad. I don't know. Just unplug the computer. <laughs> yeah. Like he can't. You can, Derek. You can't hold up the computer when you're using it. It's like my my daughter when she's like <laughs> trying to like show my my mom, you know, showing grandma something on the phone, <laughs> right? With the phone going, she's like, "Look at this! Look!" <laughs> and as I try to lift up my laptop, I unplug every. Yeah, cable we we figure that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You just come. I kind of saw that coming, like a split second before it happened, but I couldn't. That was amazing. Yeah, I am so brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to iTunes. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Out. Where is Entree Programmers? Yeah, actually, with the sticker thing, it's kind of funny because I'm such an anti-sticker person. Right. Right. I'm like, I'm like, uh, I, I, you know, you know, no offense to you guys, but. But t- typically, like when I see people put stickers on expensive stuff, it it um, I I, uh, I I strongly disapprove it. Like when you put stickers <laughs> on your car, like yeah. you spend a lot of money on, and you put stickers on, I'm like, you just yeah, you know, like twenty thousand dollar thing, you put a sticker on it. Good job. <laughs> it's prison tattoos, man. <laughs> stickers are prison tattoos for techies. They tell your life story, where you've been, what you did. But mine yeah. is on a shell on my Mac, yeah. so it's not You're directly tweeting. touching it. So yeah, I couldn't. Oh, I just couldn't oh. bring myself. That, that, I was wondering. It looks 
three dimensional there, so that's it's a vinyl thing. sticker. It peels off, and if there's any residue left over, a little bit of rubbing alcohol takes it right off. I have swapped out a dozen stickers on my laptop over the last two or three years that I've had it, and they they come off with with no problem. Oh, okay. Well, I mean well, that's that's, that's yeah. different. Yeah, I'd show you what's on mine, but I'm actually using the camera right on it, so right. <laughs> Just bend it in half. It's yeah. like those flexible yeah. iPhones, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chuck wins the I, I Learned from Derek's Mistakes award for today. So. Okay, we are sitting at 12 ratings right now. So so we didn't get a bunch more. Then. We, well, we, we did. We only had seven last week. Well, yeah, but we, we needed like That's pretty 10, good. Right? So, we got, no, yeah. we got five new ones. Um, I was also told via comment on our last episode that um, we have some international reviews that don't show up in the U.S. Oh. iTunes store. And yeah. there's there's a, a new service out there, mypodcastreviews.com. Oh, yeah. Is uh, that Daniel Lewis's? Yeah, one? Daniel Lewis. Really cool guy. Does a lot of great stuff with podcasting. So mypodcastreviews.com, you can get um, your, your podcasts, global iTunes, and Stitcher reviews checked automatically. I was kind of hoping you guys would pay for me to go to different countries and look at the iTunes store from there. <laughs> we're we're going to get you a proxy server in, in every oh, country. Okay. So. That's less fun. Yes. We're going to hire an albatross and strap you to its feet. That's right. <laughs> right. I was thinking circus cannon. Oh, there we go. Here so, comes Mexico. <laughs> so this actually means that Derek does have to sing Let yes, It Go because man. there weren't enough reviews to stave off it. So. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So how are we gonna do this? Um, let me see if I can find the actual song on audio real quick, so oh I can goodness. sing along while I'm. We're actually doing. Well, this maybe back. maybe we can be do, the do background. Do you know what we do? <laughs> no. Like how does? What does the will, background music sound like? Is I it... refuse to beatbox or. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the soundtrack. So I'm I'm gonna play the music for myself. You, you nobody else is gonna be able to hear this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh great. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, I gotta wait. I have commercial. the music on my phone. I mean, I can just hold it up to the mic or something. Oh gosh. I think I'm gonna mute my. Uh, I'm gonna mute. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. You probably want to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need the karaoke version. Uh, I have that in the other room. <laughs> I have little girls. So. Yeah, I, we have the, the sing-along version as well. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Derek is bobbing his head. Yeah, bobbing my head. <laughs> Waiting for it to start. Yeah. The snow blows wide on the mountain tonight. Not a footprint to be seen. The kingdom of isolation. And it looks like I'm the queen. The wind is howling like a swirling storm inside. Couldn't keep it in. Heaven knows I tried. Don't let them in, don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. Feel, don't you don't include the, uh, the timestamp so know. that people can know what to do. <laughs> well, now they know. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go. Turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. And you keep going. Right. No, <laughs> <laughs> I can do the whole song. All right, next time you got to put more heart into it, though. Yeah, yeah I can really bring it. Bring really it. Gotta, it really got to belt it out. You need to work on that stage presence. I do. It's been like 20 years since I've been on the stage for music. <laughs> so. All right. So that's that's okay. I mean, if you're listening to this show, right? We will do this every week. Every week. <laughs> <laughs> They're just gonna get better and better. I quit. But. <laughs>
It will be the entrepreneur show. Derek will show up one day, and it will just be him. Yeah. <laughs> just be missing him the whole time. You might yeah. want to just like you know people that don't listen to the show. You might want to just go out and. Tell them to go, you know, go on their computer physically and rate us, like on iTunes, on our account. <laughs> Even if you don't <laughs> listen to us, you just like yeah. you know, ask your friends to, you know, to just rate so that you don't have to listen to this. So yes. <laughs> next time, maybe I'll do the screamo version for <laughs> <laughs> right. the death metal. Oh. Yeah. Go. Go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So what's going on this week? Who's got something cool to share? Uh, Dropbox integration with SignalLeaf is going pretty awesome. That's cool, Sweet. yep. How many yeah, people I, are I, using it? Four or five, uh, five or six people, actually. Um, at Doug, uh, your editor, John, said he had an issue with it yesterday, so we're trying to look into that. I went ahead and created him a second podcast on his account yep. so he can have one to, to test it out with, just a throwaway podcast. See, so he's going to try and reproduce it. He sent me over your Get Up and Code episode that had the problem, but I, I, I wasn't able to reproduce it. So we're going to see if maybe if it was just a hiccup on his end or, or what's going on. But other than, than um, his one issue of... It just didn't get published for some reason. But other than that, I've had like six or eight people, six or eight episodes published by various people at this point, and it's everybody seems to love it. There's a couple of edge cases that I need to handle, like if somebody's putting in a, a subfolder name for a date, a specific published date, I need to handle invalid dates, figure out what to do with that. Maybe I'll send the person an email to say this date was invalid or something. Mark the episode as not published. Yeah, you say like, "Are you from the UK or something?" What, <laughs> what, what, what is this day, month, year garbage? That's this is America. Says. America. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I definitely would put America in there. Yeah, <laughs> I saw this picture on Facebook. Someone like they they posted is like some this, these two guys standing next to a bald eagle in a parking lot, and they're like, you know, how America is this standing next, <laughs> hanging out with a bald eagle. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's going really well though. I'm I'm pretty dang excited about that feature. And another great result of the of me having implemented that is I put a whole bunch of other changes in place that needed to be there, um, including of course the ability to read the ID3 tags. So I'm going to work on um, changing the workflow of the normal web uploader as well. So yeah. that you'll you'll upload the MP3 file or M4A file first, mm -hmm. and it will read the ID3 tags, and then take you to the to the edit screen and with all of the stuff pre-populated for you. So that way you don't have to copy and paste and all yes, that kind of stuff when you do the, ep the web upload. Now, see, this is pretty awesome because now you can go after people who are already hosting somewhere right. else. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know, like I don't know, I don't think someone can really. You might be protected against someone copying this. I, oh, I whatever. I don't. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You're the first. Like, and, and yeah, you've got right. this thing. But, but yeah, you could actually start advertising, and you could make. Yeah. You know, I would. I'd put together a quick video that just shows yeah, like I'm bam, drop, and then it's like done, published. I've, I've been thinking about the how I'm going to script that, what what I'm going to yeah. do for that for for about yeah. a week now. But now I've, you have I've, something I've, really I've compelling to show. This. Right. I keep well, tweeting about this every now and then, and I've had like five or six people um, uh, respond to this tweet saying, "This is awesome! Can't wait to to start my podcast." You know, I've um, there was a, a an existing tech podcast that was pretty popular a couple years ago. Uh, they're thinking about reviving their podcast, and they want to use Signal Leaf so they can get that feature. Another so cool. Um, another cool thing would be to go after like people that do right. uh, professionally edit podcasts. Like they yeah. maybe, they handle the you know the podcast for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Like we're talking about like the end to end type of thing. Right. And then you sell them on it, and then they'll sell their customers on it, essentially, or they'll or maybe yeah. they're already controlling the accounts because yeah, I've, um, I've got a pretty good relationship with the guy that does um, podcastfasttrack.com, Kerry Green. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's recommended my service to a number of people. So far, only one of the people that he's recommended me to has has signed up with Signal Leaf. But I need to definitely need to inform him of this feature. It would make his life a lot easier, and 
and and make it more sellable for his clients as well. It's a it's a good point. Are you doing for the timestamp or you, or for like the publishing time? Are you using a, a custom tag for that or? No, so there there weren't any tags available for that. So what I did is I put in the in the Dropbox um, integration settings in your account. So you log into Signal Leaf, go to your account page, click on the Dropbox tab. Um, you get to uh, you get to specify a, a default publish time inside oh, okay. of your, your integration settings. Okay. So I put you know 5 a.m. or 6 p.m. or whatever you want in there, and that's just the time. Mm -hmm. And then when you put a file in the Dropbox folder for your podcast, um, it will publish immediately if you just drop it into that podcast folder directly. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to set it for a future date or even a past date if you want to, you can have your Dropbox podcast folder slash a folder name that is a, a date. So mm -hmm. you know Jan-20-2015 would be sufficient to publish this and, and then you put your episode inside of that folder. So that would be that would publish your episode on January 20th, 2015 at the date or, or at the time that you specified in your Dropbox integration settings. Makes sense. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it occurred to me, I mean, with Dropbox, publishing an episode takes less than a minute. Right. Right. So I, I honestly think that you should just make a whole bunch of videos about Signal Leaf. And, I mean, you may have to change some of the processes around things, but, like, here's how to set up a podcast in less than a minute. Right. Here's how to here's how to publish an episode in less than a minute. Yeah. Here's how to do some other painful thing in less than a minute. And right. If you could have five or six of those, and uh, and then just uh, get on the Google Plus uh, podcasters group, or you know right. see if you can get the attention of of one or two of the people out there that people are paying attention to. You yep. know. Yeah. I, I think you could really get some traction there because people are gonna be like, do this like without thinking. Right. 60secondpodcasting.com in, in fact, um, I just read a book that I think is going to apply very much to Signal Leaf, and, and now that you've got this kind of feature that you can uh, that you can utilize, it's called Traction. Have you guys heard of this book? Uh -uh. No. Okay, so this is a really interesting heard of book, because when I, I was listening to the audio version of this book, um, and... It, it it is funny because I was like, wow, this is like this. They interviewed people from my contact list, like, yeah. <laughs> and you guys will relate to like just like some of the people that are interviewed. Oh man, in this there's Jimmy Wales and those eyes. I have to look at that. <laughs> okay, so like Dan Martell, <laughs> uh, right. Ryan Holiday, uh, we've got uh, Rob Walling. Yep, Rob Walling. Nice. Uh, there's a couple of Rand Fishkin, the mustache guy, Noah Kagan, Noah Kagan, yep. Patrick McKenzie. Uh, so a ton, a bunch of guys really that have have done startups and right. have have been real successful. But the book is essentially about ways to get traction with your startup, and it's got like I think twelve different channels, and you right. and it has this strategy where you like pick three channels and you you try them out, and then you see which one works the best, and then that's where you focus your effort. But but when I as I was listening to this book, I was thinking Signal Leaf, like it just you know. Uh, totally. Very clear, clear message that this is something that you could implement, Derek, and, and would really probably benefit you uh, in in a big way. So I definitely recommend checking out that so, book. So yeah. I have two books called Traction because I heard it recommended. I think on Entrepreneur on Fire. <laughs> you bought the wrong one. I think I bought. I have. So I have two of them. Which one is it? Uh, <laughs> let's see. This one should be Traction Traction: A Startup Guide to Getting Customers. Um, not. Not uh, uh, traction, uh, the making your, your tractors uh, have more horsepower for less dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, you guys... Oh, so I've got another one that's uh, get a grip on your business. Chuck, anyway. you guys talked about um, uh, Get Clients Now if, on the freelancer show, and I went yeah. to Amazon and I bought... Get more clients now, <laughs> which was a thirty dollar ebook, and I was like, "Oh man, this is expensive." But you know, they talk. It's, it sounds really good, so I'll buy it. And it was like the worst collection of like half baked blog posts ever. Oh, I no. actually, it was probably it, a, a, a robot 
Um, because there's yeah there's, there's it, a whole bunch of scammy uh, robots that compile blog posts yeah. on popular Amazon search terms and then yeah. do exactly that. They it sell them like, for like thirty. It was bucks. like one of the suggestions was like get your logo printed on CDs and mail them out. Like I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it, was so, it was so awful. I actually I, I've never done this, but I actually figured out that I could refund the book, and then I left a scathing one star yeah. review because it was just. That was just pure, pure scam right there. Oh, speaking of books, I got another one. This is a. I, I was listening to. I listened to both of these books on my way to South Florida Code Camp, going down to Miami, uh, or actually Fort Lauderdale. But um, uh, okay, you guys are going to be a little skeptical of this one, and I was skeptical <laughs> of this book. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's Tony Robbins' Money Master of the Game, right? He's been doing this okay. big launch for this book. It's a very, very long book. It was like. 26 right. hours worth of content, Holy right? Moly. Now, there's only one reason why I listen to this book because, I mean, I, I like Tony because Robbins. Because it's Tony Robbins. T Tony Robbins is awesome. But so many people said this, this book is crap. It's a scam. It's just him trying to sell you on his particular financial instruments and all this, and it's bad advice, whatever, right? So, and people in my audience were asking me about this book because they, you know, because they want to know, well, what's your opinion on it? So I can't really give an opinion on it based on reading one-star reviews, right? Oh, sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I listened to the entire book, and uh, and I was, I, you know, okay, so I would probably not follow his financial strategy because uh, I'll diverge into another book called The Millionaire Fastlane, which I think Mass, Matt Kramer had posted mm. on our, um, but, yeah. but that's more of my strategy. But he's got excellent excellent financial advice for the general path that most people should should listen to uh, money master the game in fact like w with the discussions we were having the last few weeks with debt and, and and Derek's financial situation I would highly highly recommend this book it really really has uh, like just the he, he gives you the whole like perspective on how the money system works and 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 talks a lot about why you know 401ks and mutual funds and how mutual funds are actually you know really ripping you off with the fees and how compounding interest makes a huge huge difference and the kind of you know it just had it, it actually had a few things that I'm actually going to implement from there even though I'm not using that to, you know I'm, I'm more leveraged in the in the real estate strategy but but I, I, I was amazed by how you know he, he got me the very first place that he, that I knew that this book was going to be good and I was very skeptical listening to the book um, was when he started off his book by basically saying that the key to financial success is is giving and he said that if you you know he said he basically started off by saying if you won't give 10 cents out of a dollar you're not going to give millions out of your billions mm -hmm. you, you know and and so and and to me uh, you know you know, if you've you know know my my kind of philosophy on it, like that, I I totally subscribe to that. Uh, when I started tithing, uh, my that that really made a huge huge difference in my life. And and you know, regardless of of how you know people believe that that works or or, or not, uh, there there is something to be said about that. And and he he also emphasized really uh, really heavily the point that that money doesn't. You know, it doesn't matter that wealth isn't gonna. You know, that you have to fix yourself first, and that it's not gonna make you happy. But and then he went in to tell you, you know, the, the financial advice. So I don't know. I thought it was a really good book. I think it's a book that everyone should read to get a basic financial. He like he, because he takes the things that are extremely complicated and he breaks them down so you can understand what's actually happening with the, with the most common financial investments that that we we do, which is 401ks, mutual funds, uh, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So anyway, um, and he even has a thing on annuities, and he has some really good. Like I may actually get uh, an annuity based on 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 that and and put part part uh, of my my wealth into that. But yeah, really, I thought it was a really good book. So. If we're on the topic of books, um, I owe you all a kick because I've been listening to the past Entre Programmers uh, episodes. <laughs> the 80-20 marketing? Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I need to kick all of you guys for not yes. basically tying me to my chair, duct taping <laughs> my earbuds into my ear holes and saying, you're going to listen to this about three times yes. so that you get it. So, that that book really should be like mandatory reading slash listening for anybody that comes on the show. 
Yeah, I think for me, like with my clients, that's going to be working with clients. I'm going to, like, if they're people I can influence that way, I'm going to mm-hmm. kind of require them to read that because it's just the mindset. You get the mindset mm-hmm. of, like, okay, now this, like, kind of what John was saying, I, now I see how this game works. Yeah. Right. And you're not just, like, you know, flailing around just trying to do random things. Right. Well, and a lot of times people focus on the things that have more mass appeal and, or yeah. cost less, and, you know, so I'm sitting here going, okay, so what's my 20% product? You know, the people that will spend four to five times more, and what's my 4% product, you know, for the people mm-hmm. who will spend four to times that, you know, and, and so on and so forth, you know, what, how, how high up the, the, you know, the curve do I want to go, and, you know, how can I make that work? And there was something that was bothering me partway through it, and that was just that I was like, well, you just make more expensive products just because you want to move up the curve. But no, it has to still be a, a good deal compared to your lower price products. But, yeah. you know. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the value has to be, for people to actually buy it, the value has to be there. Yeah. But my, my mind is blown. <laughs> and it's half asleep after JS Remote Comp. <laughs> and, and it's interesting. One thing I was thinking about too is the value is somewhat intrinsic, right? Because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as 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 I started making more money, I was willing to invest more because, like, uh, I guess it's it it it's not dependent on you, right? Um, it, it's mm-hmm. where the person is because. If I invest like two thousand dollars into a product that gives me like a a five percent boost in my overall revenue at this point in my career, it's well worth the two thousand. At an earlier point, maybe if you're making like sixty thousand dollars a year or so, and you invest two thousand dollars to get a five percent bump, it's not as valuable. So it's right. it's not even doesn't even depend on like what you're producing. It just depends on where the person's at. And that you know that value right. becomes worth more because when you're offering people multipliers that like increase their percentage of earning or percentage of value that they that they are able to create or capitalize on, then you know that's I think that's that be, is 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 a magnifier that's that depends on their income and their mm-hmm, business, right. not depending on you. So right, yeah, and it's not it's also not about like volume <laughs> or mass, right? Like like a five thousand dollar product doesn't have to be. It could be something really simple, like I mean, I'm I, I'm I'm on some of these, some of these newsletters, and I might only get like a couple of things, like they're they're basically like a long, a really long, really good blog post, you know, and I'm yep. paying like a hundred bucks a month for it, but I'm getting like two or three things out of it every week where I'm, or every month where I'm like, okay, that was good, <laughs> yep. you know, like and that that's what it that's when you get to higher price products, I think you get more and more of that where it's like. Right. Okay, that that one thing there that was worth it. We're done. Yep. Yeah. And and when you and you, you know when you look at the history of like you know, kind of diverging a little bit more, but of of people that are super successful, and you ask them like they all have bought like you know a lot of people have bought the Zig Ziglar stuff from you know if they're older and 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 a lot of them like you hear the same thing about the same copy you know uh, mm-hmm. that away away uh, that you're talking yeah. about. Josh, I, that comes up all the time. Like when I talk to to people that have done well yep. in not just copywriting, but in a lot of different businesses. Oh, I paid yep. two thousand dollars for this. Oh, I attended a you know a Tony Robbins seminar for five thousand dollars. It's like wow, okay, these are like you know you know a lot of these things that I initially thought okay, these are things that like suckers do that are trying to make money quickly. <laughs> And, and get rich quick. Um, sure, there's a bunch of suckers that buy these things as well, but a lot of the most successful people I know, you know, end up investing in education on these kind of expensive products that, uh, that, that, you know, so, you know, there's, there's just something to be said about that, so. Yep. Well, the other thing that's interesting is that uh, I have had higher, higher uh, priced products in the past. And so, you know, I, I didn't get as many people to sign up, but I think mainly it was because my audience was smaller and that curve, you know, yep. the people yep. that were further up the curve, you know, I didn't have as many of them as I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's real. I really like, I mean, it's it's really nice to know that that's mathematically predictable to some extent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't, it, it doesn't always, you know, you don't always know exactly what the numbers are going to end up being, but it's it's nice to know those people are almost certainly there. Yep. Cool. 
So, uh, so you wrapped up JS Remote Conf. How's that feel? Oh, so good. I mean, I really <laughs> enjoyed it, and I, I got a lot of uh, positive feedback. I've got a whole bunch of people begging me to um, do one on Ruby, and I've yeah. got a, a bunch of people asking me to do it on a couple of other technology areas. Um, and I'd kind of like to do a couple on some of the softer skill areas. So, um, you know, I've talked to you, John, about doing a career conference where we talk about career stuff and, you know, maybe doing some on, um, like, uh, project workflows and processes and things like that or something like that. But, um, yeah, the, the two-week schedule that I put together on this was exhausting. And partially it was because um, I spent a lot of time... Last week on Monday, you know, I was up basically all night Monday night uh, making sure that everything was ready to go, and then um, I had some major family drama that I caused, so I had to deal with that <laughs> at the beginning of this week, and uh, I'm not going to go into details. Uh, just take it from me. Don't don't curse at your aunt. Um, <laughs> but, uh, okay. That totally exploded into way more drama than a... Anyway, yeah. So, so yeah, so I, you know, I was feeling bad and I didn't sleep well at the beginning of this week. So it's been kind of exhausting to have something going on three nights of the week. Yeah. But, and I'm probably going to change the format and see if I can get it to all fit to one week somehow. But I got a lot of positive feedback. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm probably going to raise the price on tickets. So if there's any crossover between the audiences, you can be angry with me. That's fine. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, overall it was a huge success. And uh, so, yeah, we'll probably try a few things differently next time. But um, And I'll get the communication uh, tightened up because yeah. I think that was the biggest problem that I had. Um, and, you know, people were good about it, and we were able to compensate and get people in, you know, in a timely manner. So nobody really missed anything if they, you know, if they were around. But, yeah, I mean, that, that was really the thing. Uh, that I need to do better. So, did you get any feedback on the um for like the format and the length of it? Like we talked about that. I'm curious um, if you I'm liked it or. Yeah, I'm gonna put a survey out. Um, we did have a drop from week one to week two. Mm. Um, and uh, I actually had one speaker not show up on Wednesday evening, and so I, I reached out to my alternates and they didn't get back to me fast enough, so I just gave a talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was one that I'd given before. I was like, I'm going to talk about freelancing. There we go. Yeah. And uh, I got a lot of good feedback on that too, but that really wasn't the idea behind this conference was for right. me to speak. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so as far as the format and everything goes, um, I've had a few people say they liked it. Um, I've had a bunch of people get back to me, mainly in Europe, saying, you know, your timing is terrible because it's like, <laughs> 1, 2, or 3 a.m. there. <laughs> and uh, Take a nap. You know, so, right. <laughs> we did have some people, like like the diehard people that were there early and were participating in the chat, were in Europe. It was really funny. So yeah. it's like 2 a.m. Wow. over there, and they're like, yeah, it was, it's awesome. You know, I'm in Ukraine. <laughs> but, uh, or I'm in Switzerland. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was really good, and... Uh, so yeah, so I'll probably try and do it a little earlier in the day, and uh, that way it can be at worst case scenario for them, it'll be late at night, but not you know in the middle of early morning. Yeah. And then um, yeah, I'm wondering if people would prefer to just have three or four or five talks together instead of two. What you could do is just list all the speakers ahead of time, and then just cancel all of them. It could be all you. <laughs> <laughs> you can just, List you know, a whole bunch of speakers that have never agreed yeah. to actually speak. Okay. David Hanemeyer Hansen. Right. And, <laughs> and you'll get a few of them to actually speak just by, you know, the, that whole, just you know, Send them some pressure. pairs. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the plan for the next one is actually um, I'm much better connected in the Ruby community. Right. And... Um, the, the community itself isn't as fragmented as the JavaScript community because there are, like, Node heroes and Angular heroes and Ember heroes. and um, In Ruby, it's it's not as much that way. I mean, they're, they're the people that everybody kind of looks up to. So I'm probably going to see if I can just get all of them or enough of them to speak to where I don't even open a call for proposals. 
Yeah. And it's just right. kind of the, the big hero conference for Ruby that everybody can attend because it's online. And uh, It's nice that you it. didn't didn't uh, go for the easy one first, too. So you can really, you know, you'll take everything you learn from doing the JavaScript conference and really well, kill this one. And that was kind of the idea, was that um, I knew that I had enough ears and eyes, you know, that come to the website or listen to the podcasts in JavaScript to pull off a conference. And, um, you know, and I feel I felt like it was a, a decent way to, to go for some experience. So, yeah. um, so I experimented with it. I figured that if it totally flopped and I didn't get it, enough signups to make it worth it, then I'd know that it probably just wasn't a great idea. But uh, we had 250 people sign up for the conference, um, either as part of a group or as individual, you know, buy a ticket attendees. Right. The conference itself made about sixteen and a half thousand dollars. Nice. Um, I spent fifteen hundred dollars on the design. I spent a bunch of work putting together a website, which I can basically repurpose. Yeah. Um, I'll probably put a different design on it for you know Ruby or Angular JS, which are the two technologies that I am not officially announcing anything about at this point. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, but that's kind of the idea. So I can repurpose a lot of this. I can tighten up the communication. I can automate a few more things, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, make sure people get email the receipt from Stripe when they pay, so that I don't have to go into Stripe and send people a bazillion receipts. <laughs> Or have Mandy do it. And then, yeah, just experiment with a few more things. Um, I I really did like the way that things work for the most part with ClickWebinar, but I'm not, I'm not sure there's not a better way to do it, and there were one or two things that kind of make me think that I might want to keep looking. So I'm still playing with that. But for the most part, you know, I know a lot better what I want out of a software like that. So, yeah. It, it was a win. It was it was definitely a a, a big win, and you know John uh, spoke for about a half hour longer than he was scheduled because people <laughs> wanted him to keep talking. Um, yeah, I have that it experience was every time I talk to John. Yeah. Well, well, 10 p.m. Eastern rolled around, and I got on the chat, and I'm like, "What do you want to do? Do you want me to stop him and have him take questions? Do you want me to just stop him and stop the conference, or do you want him to keep talking?" And it was overwhelming. You know, oh, let him let him go. So yeah, so I just jumped on and said, uh, "Go as long as you want." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I went till I couldn't talk anymore. So. <laughs> yeah. That'd be dangerous it was really... with me because I've been known to stand in front of people and talk for three days at a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was cool. It was it's interesting too. Like I don't I don't think I've done an online talk before. Well, I mean I've done webinars, but that there's a little different. So it's mm -hmm. a little especially that how to market yourself talk is. Because it's usually very interactive, so I tried to, you know, ask for people questions and put, have them put stuff in the chat mm -hmm. to, to make it interactive. But uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's definitely, you know, different to give that because I'm used to, you know, my style of talking is to go in in like, you know, walk around the audience and into just like really interact with people. So it's it's you know it's it's a little bit different, but it but it worked out. I thought I thought it was it was it was good. It's it's you can't it's weird like you can't gauge the feedback. Like you know normally I'm like looking. I'm like are people nodding their heads or you know you got all these visual cues that that tell you you know where to put emphasis and stuff. You so. need the Nielsen dial, right? So yeah, <laughs> totally. Like on the, the, the approval presidential uh, State of the Union, it's like yeah. It was that was I, I had similar experience with with Telerik because uh, we did our our webinar announcements for new product releases and features and stuff, and we we pre-recorded all of our segments, but we we recorded them so that they sounded like they were live. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. we would we would actually um, the the person who was quote speaking at the at the time. Would would oftentimes be answering questions in the in the chat room, <laughs> and and forgetting that they weren't supposed to be because they were supposed to be speaking at the time. And every now and then somebody would call us out, and they're like, "What? What's going on? Oh, sorry." You can't multitask like this. Yeah. Oh, this is why you're not so productive. Right. I'm typing I mean, with yeah. my toes right now. Yeah, I've got two computers. <laughs> one on the left hand, one on the right hand. Yeah. Yeah. The way that I I handled that and. Most of the speakers would handle that as if a question came up that they wanted to address. 
they would just read it and then answer it because right. they had a microphone and the you know so. right yeah and that worked out but uh, yeah click webinar has uh, raise your hand and we'll you know we'll activate your voice and then you can actually just talk to the speaker nice which is nice and I I didn't point it out to John but he could have also uh, used the polls feature you can, you can mm. put a poll up and let see oh, so oh, that's cool yeah so nice on, his, on the on the question you know you know have you updated your blog within the last week or blah 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 you know that could have been in the poll yeah. in my experience though um the I the, the I like the um idea of bringing people in to webinars like that I've I've been on a lot of webinars where it just was an utter train wreck because 97% mm -hmm. of people don't aren't used to like this type of thing that we're doing right now where they've got their mic situated and they're you know they've got a headset right and, you know no background noise and so yeah. yeah it can be a real it can be a real distraction yeah there were a couple of glitches um, I had one speaker panicking right up until the talk uh, because of technical things, and then it all just kind of worked out. Um, and then we had another speaker get on, and he he had things work out for him when we did the dry run, and then we had some technical issues when he actually spoke. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that kind of stuff happens, but I definitely push for uh, more dry runs beforehand. So, like, uh, kind of 80-20 wise, like, What's it? Could you? I mean, this seems like it could be the type of thing that you could do three or four of these a year, and that could be you could That's, move off of that. That is exactly what I'm looking at because um, you know, podcast sponsorships. Um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And you know, the payout is it's it's enough to make it worth it. You know, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of things like that in the twenty or in the eighty percent. Um, but this is something that. Um, for the amount of work that I put in, I feel like it really did pay off, and I think I could do it again and make it more profitable, and that way I can just focus on, you know, providing this kind of stuff for, for people. Right. Um, the other thing that I'm running into, and I really don't want to monopolize the time, but the other thing I'm running into is that my consulting business is starting to really pick up, like really, really pick up. Um, like I just hired one person and I'm probably going to hire another one or two persons. Um, so I'm trying to balance all that out and figure out, you know, where, you know, where I can, you know, focus my attention to where it's going to pay off the best. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> because least, yeah. honestly, I'm, I'm moving away from doing all the coding myself. Yeah. And so it, it can get up into that 20% area where I'm managing the project and, you know, and then I'm just bringing in, you know, whatever I make off the top of, you know, whatever I'm paying my subcontractors, you know, so I get paid for my, basically my project management time and my sales time, mm -hmm. marketing efforts. Right. So, you know, I, I'm trying to figure all that out. We'll just see how it goes, but, uh, yeah, if I can get most of this together to where I, it can kind of manage itself and the conference I think is much easier to do that with than the than the consulting stuff but yeah if I can get all that to work out nicely then then I'll have a couple of streams of revenue that I can work with so awesome what's bringing the consulting stuff in is it just is there anything that you can put your finger on or so um, there is one person who I, I started out actually coaching him on Ruby on Rails, and he seems to be finding a lot of work working on Spree Commerce, which is an open source uh, mm. shopping cart in Rails. And you know he's he's founded a few other general Rails projects, and uh, keeps bringing me in as the back end expertise on those projects. And so that's that's part of where it's picking up. And then occasionally I just get some some person come to me and. You know, it's like, hey, I want you to, I want you to do this big thing, and so I'm building this social network right now for this, uh, uh, this company, and that's probably gonna, it, you know, it, as long as I don't blow it, it's probably gonna be like a year's worth of work at a very lucrative rate, and so nice. It's it's kind of a blend between what I've been doing for a while, starting to pay off in a big way, and then also just, you know, getting referrals from this one person in particular. Mm -hmm. 
So Chuck, yeah. Chuck is rewriting Facebook in Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell but, it. But then you're going to have to build your own version of Ruby that gets compiled properly. You know, <laughs> I, I, I've actually thought about doing that just for fun, <laughs> just for the mental exercise. But oh, so I had an interesting talk. Uh, so I, I said I went down to the South Florida Code Camp, right, and I did a new talk on five five um, uh, five five soft skills every software engineer should know. Mm. And uh -huh. and I totally I think I had talked about I bombed a talk when I had uh, when I had given it to my wife like as the pre right and I was like man this thing is just not coming in but then it went it went beautifully at the code camp it like it, because it was, you had that chance to practice and you learned I I guess so I mean it it um it, I felt like I just didn't have anything to say on the talk but then it just you it went that perfectly John's just revealing something about his marriage here so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's so I get so much more energy and so much more you know uh, excited when I talk in front of a crowd. Like yeah. it, it energizes uh -huh. me, and so I do a much better job, and and getting that feedback and stuff. So yeah. you know what terrifies me, quite honestly, in, in public speaking, a very small crowd. Yeah, yeah, that's harder. Just absolutely freaks me out. Like if there's only ten people in the room, I am I can't get my nerves under control at all. You put that's me in true. front of in in front of 200, 300, 500 people and I'm I'm rocking, I'm going but yeah. you get a small crowd and I'm, I don't know what to do. <laughs> it is, it, I agree, it is harder with a smaller crowd. Um, but um, but anyway, it, it went really well and what I did was I gave away, I did both of my talks and now the, I think the five uh, soft skills talk is probably going to be my primary talk instead of the how to market yourself because I feel like nice. that talk is actually stronger right. now. And it had you know a bunch of slides, you know, like fifty-eight slides or something, and I made it made it through it. But um, it sounds but I, more actionable. It sounds like a like a it's closer to what where people are actually think you know where they are now, right? Versus the other one. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it probably is a little bit more, and it, it have, has more maybe a wider appeal. But the room was totally packed. Both of the talks were were completely packed. Like, nice. Um, and then I gave away two of my books for each one, and I did this kind of a stupid way, but it would still end up being smart uh, because um, I basically handed around a piece of paper and said, "Put your name and email address on here," to 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 enter the contest mm -hmm. and and I'll give away two books at the end and then I just use a random number generator and you know picked uh, you know, from from the from the list but I ended up getting about uh, in each in each one of my sessions I ended up getting about 60 to 70 email addresses nice mm -hmm. So nice. that made it a pretty good score for the, I mean, going and doing a free conference. Uh, right after I did the five soft skills talk, I sold two full price copies of nice. for Yourself. So I'm assuming nice. that came from the conference because it was right. right after. And then I picked up, like I said, about probably about, uh, I'm going to say maybe around 80 or 90 non-duplicate email addresses. Um, so that's, I mean, that's going to be definitely be worth the time. But that was a right. big lesson for me. It's like, okay, next time I do, anytime I do a talk, I should give away a, a book or two, and I should actually have like a bring my iPad and just have it where you can pass it around and sign up. You know, just a, a <laughs> you're gonna game. you're gonna go through at least one iPad per conference. <laughs> <laughs> the last or, guy in the room just gets up and walks out quietly. Yeah, <laughs> so, something like that. I don't yeah. know because having it having it where you have to. I mean, it was fine. Like it, it's not that big of a deal. Like yeah. I was handwriting it, but I, I don't there know. I have to services, think about that. Um, there are services where you can like text your email address. So. Yeah, like either that or just give them a web page. Like throw it, throw a uh, page up on your site and just have them opt in. The only problem is not everyone had their, you know, their laptops and stuff. So right. So True. maybe yeah. maybe the pencil and paper will have to be. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. But but that that worked out really well to to do that and and the talk went went pretty well. So it was it was uh, it ended up being. Uh, being being pretty good, uh, so yeah. So that's I mean that's that's definitely something to do though, because you capture those email addresses of people that are interested, and and you know they're we'll see how it goes uh, forward from there. But but it should it should make it well worth the time. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else from that conference. There, I mean I did a lot of like I met a lot of people. It was mm -hmm. it was good. So it was. Uh, you know, we got a couple of conferences yeah. coming up. I'll be speaking. Yeah, at Prairie DevCon in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, in the beginning of March, 
and then I'll be doing the keynote at uh, Space City JS oh, nice. in Houston at the end of March. I'll be doing the, the closing keynote. There's going to be an opening keynote, and I'll be doing the closing one. So that's going to be pretty cool. That'll be my first official keynote speech, whatever you want to call it. So that'll be fun. It's, it's, it's essentially going to be the same talk at both places, both the, the same core, um, and that's the, the, the five, uh, five stages of, of uh, Bootstrapper's Grief based on that blog post that I wrote oh, a while back. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take those, those basic ideas and I'm, I'm I'm putting just a lot of stories and a lot of lessons learned around that. And so at the, up in, in Canada, um, they want me to specifically focus on the entrepreneurial side of things. Yep. And um, down in, in the Houston one, they want more of the developer side of things, but also some of the entrepreneurial stuff. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and make it... You know the the human side of the really the soft skills side side of software development for the Houston one. I'm gonna have some technical lessons in there too, like when I accidentally deleted my production database for Signalief and didn't have a backup in place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Think, things like that. So, so there there certainly are gonna be technical lessons, but uh, I, I'm gonna focus more on the soft skills side of of development for for that one. So I think yeah. it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be kind of kind of crazy i'm 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 glad that i get to base both talks on the same subject since they are both within the same month cuz it was freaking me out thinking that i had to write two talks in the yeah. same month <laughs> exactly yeah if awesome. you can reuse the talks that really are yeah. you know part and of and they're their... they're going to be different enough that i think there's yeah. going to be a lot of value for people to watch both of them but yeah oh, so... that would be, be fun a couple. Let's see. Oh, a couple other things. I've got an interesting week lined up for talking with with people, high profile people. So today I'll actually be uh, talking with Dan Martell for like half an hour, which is nice. uh, pretty pretty awesome uh, to get advice from from that guy. You know, he's multi millionaire, met mm -hmm. multiple startups. You know, just sold Clarity FM, uh, and uh, and then I actually am talking with Ryan Holiday next week. Uh, for half an hour, but I am paying five hundred dollars to do it because uh, that's what he charges. In fact, he charges fifteen hundred dollars an hour on Clarity FM if you want to talk to him, you know, like, like twenty-five dollars a minute or whatever it is. Wow. But uh, but he, I may try and get him to. I might price him out to see what he would charge to basically run a viral campaign for my soft skills book. That was mm -hmm. that was initially why I want to talk to him, and hopefully in the 30 minutes I talk to him, that I'll at least get some ideas from him because you know this guy is pretty much a viral marketing genius. Uh, you know, he's if you look at his books too, you know, that's one thing is like he's got those three books there out there: Obstacles the Way, uh, I think it's called Introduction to Growth Hack, Hacker Marketing or or Introduction to Growth Hacking, something like that. And then, um, you know, trust me, I'm lying. Confessions of a Media Manipulator. They're all like in the top five thousand in in the Kindle in in the on Amazon. So, you know, he he's definitely got the the credibility. So um, nice. Um, and then also, I will be being on. I'll be on Brendan Dunn's podcast. Uh, oh, nice. Coming up, the next episode, Very nice. and he's going to guest post on simpleprogrammer.com. So, um, so that's that'll be a good relationship because I've, that audience, like Brendan Dunn and 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 my audience, are, are very much overlapping in a lot of ways, and I think that there, there'll be a lot of lot mm -hmm. of good, uh, you know, good opportunities there in the future. So, right. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it is. I like it's Brendan. That should be good. <laughs> yeah, but kind of the theme of my year, as I've been thinking about this more and more, is leverage. I need to really utilize right. leverage uh, because that's you know the biggest things that you know it's it's like you spend all this time working on on these things. It's like like Chuck was saying, like you know, or, or like you know, just GS Remote Conf was a really good example. It's like you know the amount of effort put in versus the amount of result you get like those things the high leverage activities are so important and it's just it's just the same as thinking about 80 20 but i really want to try and hit big audiences by doing things like guest posts by you know doing yep. you know blogs and podcasts and where can i figure out you know these these major leverage points so i want to do a contest every month on the giveaway for the for the 
soft skills book, um, and then I'll probably pick up an, an extra thousand email addresses just by doing that every every month. It's a very high leverage activity. It takes me five minutes to set up a, a contest and get it kicked off. So, yep. Right. So you're getting eighty percent of the results for twenty percent of the work. Yep. Going back to that other discussion. But yeah, there's a lot of, and when I go back and look at like a lot of the people in, in, in that traction book too, like when you look at a lot of people that really, really got to very high levels of success, almost all of them focus on leverage, right? They, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's important to do the daily grind to be producing content and, 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 and stuff so that you have, you know, bricks in the wall and have take advantage of long tail. But people like James Clear are really, really good at leverage. Noah Kagan, yep. really, really good at leverage. Right, a lot of these, uh, a lot, a lot of people that really, really, uh, you know, did did well, figured out some way to leverage some kind of channel or multiple channels. Uh, the uh, what's his name uh, on Pat Flynn's show? There was this guy, uh, I can't remember his name now, cause, but he was he he. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been listening to the episode, but he he lives in Maui, but he he was like this book author that had published this book. He was he was delivering bread from a, a, a bread truck, and he, <laughs> he, he like his book was a total flop, right? He, he when it when it first came out, not even his friends or family bought it for like three days, like zero sales, and then he figured out how to start guest posting on like Inc. dot com and Business Insider and, and stuff like that, and then it just exploded. Like he he was able to to use the the power of leverage to really really super grow. So I think that's that's definitely where where I'm seeing. And that's the other thing is I'm doing is I'm I'm probably gonna be hiring someone full time now. Uh, that's that um, that's gonna take over a lot of stuff. I've I've got a like I've created a list of tasks that uh, you know I realized that during my week, like this is just an interesting um, you know, the tasks that I'll have this person do. Um, I record and edit, get up and code. Well, I guess I'm not doing that anymore, but this is a general. Um, schedule and edit YouTube high quality videos, add annotations to them. You know, that takes a schedule YouTube, the webcam versions that I do, which I do three YouTube videos a week. I do a blog post, but then the blog post is also things like putting images in there, putting in the Amazon links, tags, categories, all this kind of stuff that could be totally outsourced. Scheduling Edgar posts, you know, once a week, every day going through my email and replying to the lessons from my from my course, which takes about forty five minutes to an hour a day. So that oh, wow. and that that can totally be outsourced because most of my lessons, it's like you just need to reply back to someone and say, hey, you know, great, uh, great that you got your blog up or that looks good, or, you know, mm -hmm. very short mm -hmm. answers, but it takes time. Uh, moderating comments on my blog, YouTube you know, channels, those, a lot of times someone could probably just go in there and just, you know, and respond as if they were me or, or flag the ones that I need to respond to directly. Uh, you know, the, the tweet, the Twitter following and unfollowing that's done every day and that's, you know, it's a good 10 or 15 minutes. It adds up. Um, so, so there's a bunch of stuff that like, you know, at least, at least a, a fourth of my week is spent doing all these things that could be, that could be done by someone else. So, well, whoever you hire, hire two, and I'll take one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John Sanmez here. Just want to take a second to tell you about a tool that I am really excited about. I've recently switched all of my email marketing over to a tool called Drip, and I couldn't be happier. I created a course, an email course, about how to create a blog that boosts your career, and so far, I've gotten a ton of signups from it, way more than I expected. Not only that, but the engagement level of the people that are signing up is huge, and then at the end of the course, I'm getting big conversion rates, which is something that I really need in order to sell my products, and this is something that's extremely helpful to any entrepreneur or entre programmer out there. The reason why Drip works so well is because it's specifically built for bootstrappers. It's email marketing for bootstrappers. And this is really why I switched over and why I'm finding it so effective. If you want to get started with Drip, you can get started today. Just go to gettrip.com forward slash entreprogrammers. Once again, that's getdrip.com forward slash entreprogrammers. And when you sign up, you can get an email mini course created for you. They'll actually do this for you. So if you're not sure how to do this, if you have a few blog posts or an ebook, they can get that started for you, which is makes it super simple and you can start getting those benefits today and not tomorrow. 
They also have all the kind of marketing automation rules that you would want, tagging much better than a lot of the other major automation players. And they integrate with things like Stripe, PayPal, Lead Pages, Chargeify, Gumroad, tons of tons of great features in there. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Go to getdrip.com forward slash entreprogrammers. Take care. This episode of the Entre Programmers is brought to you in part by the Telerik platform at telerik.com slash platform. The Telerik platform allows developers to build, connect, test, and deploy cross-platform mobile applications using nearly any approach, web, hybrid, or native. With tools like the App Builder to create mobile apps with HTML and JavaScript, control suites for Windows, Android, and iOS, and powerful management tools like Telerik Analytics and App Manager, you're sure to find what you need. With powerful tools of the Telerik platform, the UI tools, and so much more that it provides, you will be able to create outstanding user experiences. So check it out and try the Telerik platform today at telerik.com slash platform. Well, that's another idea that, that I was thinking about too, is at some point it might make sense to for for some of us to pool together to hire certain roles. Yeah. Um, like a designer, like if we, if designer, we, definitely Josh is, um, Unix admin guy. Yep. yep. And the, the general task person that you're hiring. I mean, I could use all of these services and it's difficult for me to find time to look for someone. Yep. So yeah, it does. I think like the first one I would think of is, is possibly a designer. Yeah. Like if, if I think the four of us could probably hire a full-time designer and keep that person busy. Yeah, I, I need work on Watch Me Code. So I need a designer that knows WordPress and the the Genesis framework. So that's yep. that's kind of where I'm at because there's there's a lot of stuff I need to do on Watch Me Code, and I just I haven't had time to do any of it recently. Yeah. Yeah, and I haven't been totally happy with the design on. Well, I'm I'm totally happy with the design on DevChat.tv, but once I get doing things with podcasting again and go after FeedRange, I'm going to need help mm-hmm. there. But yeah, for my my first hire though, my goal is really to uh, bring in. I need a right hand man type of person. Is what I've realized that I need right. more than anything mm-hmm. else. Because I went through all the roles and I was like, do I need someone editing? Do I need someone doing this? And what I really need is someone that I'm going to train uh, from the ground up. And it's basically going to be like, look, here's the deal. Like this is a lot of kind of grunt work, but you're going to learn how to be an entrepreneur and how to run a business. Like you're going to get this benefit from it, and you're going to be able to grow with it. And you know, eventually, you might be able to take you know bigger charge of the of the company and, and be um, almost almost a partner in the in the mm-hmm. company. You know, uh, depending on where, where it goes. And so that's what I'm doing for this first hire. It's like, okay, right hand man, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do what I do. I'm going to show you all the inner workings of how simple programmer, where we make our money all of these things and then you're going to take over these tasks and then you know basically be able to do what what I can do so that I can now focus on the higher value like cuz I need to create more courses I need to mm-hmm. I, I'm right now I'm just treading water like every week I'm getting done what I need to get done and I'm making s- very small progress but I'm not creating mm-hmm. new things that are you know that are going to generate new revenue so yep yeah the other thing that just along these same lines, is I've been using Mandy Moore as kind of my general VA, Mm -hmm. but there are a lot of things that um, it doesn't make sense to leverage her for those, Um, not because she can't do them, but because I could probably find somebody for, you know, uh, 20% of the cost that could do, you know, just as good a job because it doesn't require a whole lot of expertise in any way to do them. So, you know, you're talking about YouTube annotations and stuff like that. I mean, I can do a screencast for two minutes to show people how to put annotations in and how I want them done. And exactly. Stuff like that. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I can pay Mandy's rate or I can pay somebody else the rate and even if they take twice as long as she would, I still save quite a bit of, of effort and I get the same result. Or right. quite a bit of money and I get the same result. So Yeah, there's definitely a balance though in terms of that and like having to manage twenty different people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Then, that's yeah. where I like uh, John's approach of just having one person that kind of does all of these tasks. Right. Yeah. And and that's why I'm hiring in the US probably paying a little bit more is just to have someone not that, you know, that someone from another country couldn't do it, but in general like if you hire someone in Odesk that doesn't have the you know, you you're it's very it's more difficult to find someone that could do general purpose type of mm-hmm. 
of things. Mm-hmm. So, um, right. so yeah, by, that's why I'm thinking like doing the right hand man thing is going to be difficult because of the training involved. Mm-hmm. But once I can get someone, you know, up to that that level, then it's going to be huge because that person will be able to do whatever I need them to do because they're going to understand right. my yeah. systems. And and then from there, I'll probably hire out. In fact, you know, my, my goal is like things like editing podcasts, things like, you know, editing YouTube videos, those can really be done at an even cheaper rate, but mm-hmm. I'll have my right-hand man find the person who can do that. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then when that, you know, that then my right-hand man person will be m- – move on to other things like marketing in, in other pieces but you know the key would be that like all the things that once I've put the system in place then I need to get it off my plate to, to someone else and then can they further systemize it and, and hire it out sure that's that's fine but you know, I always need to be uh, you know p- picking out the new territory and then making a process around that um, and that's where where the value is and I've just hit this point now where it's like you know I don't want to reduce the amount of content that I'm putting out because you know, I'm getting good, good, good growth uh, from that, but I need to hit the next, you know, the, the so next thing. What you need to do with the person that you're hiring, when they get to the point where they can start looking for other people to do the work, you need to have that person convince the people that he <laughs> hires that you're this horrible, really strict, has to be absolutely perfect kind of yeah. person that that demands perfection, and and that way. You know, the person that that you're you, that you hired can be really strict and tough uh, on that other person, but it's it's offloading the burden of of being that that horrible mean person to you, yeah. Because he's he's convincing them that you're the strict <laughs> horrible bad person instead. So it, it you know creates some fun situations like that where you get these phenomenal results, and and it it might make you look like the bad the bad person in, in that third matter, party, exactly. but it doesn't matter because you're getting amazing results. I thought no, you were I'm afraid of John. <laughs> I thought you were going to suggest that the subcontractors could go out and recruit more subcontractors. Yeah, but more subcontractors <laughs> and more subcontractors. And... It's a business well, opportunity. It's, it's a, the best business it's not opportunity a pyramid in scheme. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is that uh, and this is part of where I've been tempted to do something a little bit different. So instead of paying them a per hour thing, I'd pay them a per result thing. Hmm. And then, you know, so I go check it. Looks good. I pay you. Um, you know, as opposed to, um, you know, paying you per hour. So if you hire another subcontractor that does the work, I mean, I really don't care as long as I get the result that I want. Right. Right. Yeah, and that, in fact, that's an interesting point because one of the things that I was going to bring up with the, this person that I hire is that this is sort of a risky job, right? Because I, I'm going to borrow a word from Matt Kramer where he, he used the word entrepreneur, mm-hmm. but that's what this role will be. It'll basically be like, I, you know, I'm not going to put the pressure on right at the beginning, but I'm going to make it known and say, look, it costs simple programmer, you know, say $3,000 a month to have you on staff. That means you need to be earning more than that. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're the entrepreneur within the business. How are you? What what is you? What are you doing that directly ties to generating that revenue that pays your check? And mm-hmm. that's. I mean, I think that's. It, it, it'd be hard for some people, but it's an interesting way to think about it. And if you have, you know, I feel like if I hired more employees, I would want them all to be sort of thinking this because this is. You know, the, right. this is what an entrepreneur or what a business ultimately has to do. Right. And that's ultimately, like, it's better. Ultimately, it comes down to that, right? It's like whether you tell someone that or not, the a business hires an employee because they make more money than right. they cost. And so, like, to make that just explicit, to say this is, you know, and, and, and to mm-hmm. give – someone the opportunity to tie their value to it and to think, you know, entrepreneurially inside a company on how they can generate money to justify their their existence there. Uh, mm-hmm. That I think is is kind of a, a good way way to do that. And that's and I want to have that within the company because I want, you know, I, I don't want to just hire someone to do tasks. I want someone to think about how to grow and how that they can contribute to the bottom line. So this so is, yeah. this is one thing I picked up from um one of the, the, uh, the dental consulting client that I've been writing for. Um, <clears throat> so he has this he he has this whole spiel that he goes into where, like in a, in a dentist's office, and it's true in like a chiropractor's office too, and a lot of a lot of small businesses, 
you've got two different mindsets. You have the owner, and he has all the risk and reward. He lives in kind of this entrepreneurial zone yep. where, you know, when he gets up every day, he hits the ground running because he knows that if he works hard at the end of the day, he's going to take home a bigger paycheck. Then he's, he's got all his employees. They, they have, like, they just come in, basically they're hourly, yep. and they have no share in any of the risk. They have no incentive to do anything other than look busy and not get fired. Um, so what this guy does is he actually um, he has a pretty good bonus system where you have like you actually incentivize like the, the hygienist gets paid a commission on work that she um, that she generates. So like she's talking to a patient about Invisalign, they decide to get Invisalign, she gets a bonus on that, but only if it makes it all the way through the system. So she's putting pressure on the next person down the line to do their job, and it kind of feeds itself. And um, it works mm -hmm. really well. So, yeah, like giving them an, a way to tie into the uh, – or giving them a stake in the, um, the end result. Yeah, that's interesting. Because one of the things that if I brought somebody on that I'd want them to do is I'd want them to go um, basically find and manage sponsors for my podcasts. Because it's not a high leverage activity for me, but it does make me money. Right. Yeah. So uh, the whole idea is, yeah. I mean, if they if they bring in a new sponsor, then I like the idea of giving them a cut. So as long as they're still sponsoring and still happy, you get your piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's a, yeah, that's a really good example. I was actually thinking about doing the same thing with with sponsorships because I need sponsorships for Get Up and Code and, and things like that. But but the idea is, I mean, you know, I'm just throwing a number out here. But let's say that you brought someone on and you said, okay, if you get a sponsor, you're going to get 10 percent of whatever you can get that sponsor to pay. That gives someone an opportunity who might be a low income earner to basically like you know get ten sponsors each paying ten percent and then suddenly they're making passive income off of this essentially you know where the you know uh, so so that's a I think that's a huge incentive because someone who would be very very far away from making passive income could suddenly make passive income by getting commissions on on sponsorship for for you you know I mean essentially they it's I mean they'd still be doing doing work but but it would be a, a very a very high leverage activity for them yes well and it's something that I don't have time for anyway so yeah. I'm either taking time away from a high leverage activity or I'm not doing it and so for me it's it's basically bonus activity to get stuck. But yeah, so that's that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. I have to take this next step. Like this may crash and burn. This may not work <laughs> out. But I I will not get any further. Like I I've I've sort of reached the peak of what I think I can do on my own at this point. And you know I've had those weeks you know where I'm like oh, I just want to quit the internet and leave. And and <laughs> I could do that. I mean, but like what I if if I have a support system in place, if I have someone else that you know, then I can like say, okay, well, fine. I'm just I'm I'm not doing anything for this week, or I'm doing minimal, and someone else can can take care of this for right. me, and that gives it like it's a pressure relief valve. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jeff Schoolcraft calls that uh, I want to go be a pig farmer. <laughs> in other words, I would rather be hip deep in some animals poop than be doing this right now. Yeah. And and we all have those days as entrepreneurs, right? It's like, okay, this really sucks. I would rather be hip deep in poop. I, I know somebody that is almost literally doing that. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a software developer still still writing software, now doing PHP of all things. Um, used to do Rails and did .NET and JavaScript and stuff, but he's 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 still writing code, but he's doing that uh, while he supports him, his him and his family building up their their small farm, yeah, I've never seen poop spelled PHP before. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can tell what language Chuck does not have a podcast. On. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's funny. Hey, Derek said it. I was just summarizing. PHP poop. <laughs> It's funny though. I actually, it's embarrassing to say, but every once in a while, I have this fantasy about like going and getting a real job, and like <laughs> I, I think about because I try to think what like I mean, you know, it's silly. It's silly, right? Because because I always wanted this, and then but but you know, it's 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 a it's a ridiculous fantasy. But sometimes I think, man, when I used to just work a nine to five job. What I, I just like I got up in the morning, I went to work. I didn't really care because it was like. It's but like, you know what? I I did that again. I did that with Teller. Yeah. I said, you yeah. know what? 
you know, I, I really like this entrepreneurial thing. I like being a consultant. But maybe it would be nice just to go have a nine to five job again. Yeah, you come home from <laughs> I work. Can't do it. You watch TV. I can't do it. You don't have to write blog posts or answer people's emails. And, nope. You know, it's like you just do that <laughs> yeah. thing. But I know. I mean, you know. That's why I say I, it's a ridiculous fantasy. I did it for I a know, year. Yeah. yeah, I know. I escaped from that life. And you know, <laughs> just not for me. Yeah. Wherever you're at, the grass is always greener on the other oh, side yeah, of the fence, totally. right? And you just have to objectively look at it and say, it's okay, Astro it's definitely better to be in the position I'm in now than right. what I was. I have freedom. I can take off. I can I don't have. I'm the only person that's pushing my nose to the grindstone right now is me, and it's mm -hmm. and, and it's not because you know I don't have to do this to eat. You know, it's it's so. So yeah, I mean, but it, but it's interesting though, because you know, your mind, you you think about, oh well, life was so much easier when you had less pressure and yeah, less things. Right. You just did the job that someone else told you to do. You know, <laughs> um, it's impossible to go, you know, back like it. Like once your eyes have been opened, uh, it, it's like eating from the the tree of 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 good and evil. But um. <laughs> <laughs> So um, if we keep doing this podcast long enough, we'll all probably go come full circle, and we'll like you know all have jobs. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be, we'll you know, all we'll be like farmers, corporate, corporate programmers. Yeah. Um, my problem is always the, the Andre farmers. <laughs> <laughs> my problem's always been that I've never had, I've never actually done the nine to five, come home and watch TV thing. I've always had at least two jobs. Like when I yeah. when I graduated, I was doing. Um, I was working in PR and marketing during the day, and I was doing newspaper job at night. Yeah. Um, you know, and that was you know I was going to meetings at night and and had deadlines and everything. It was you know so I've I've pretty much always had. So I yeah, it does sound appealing sometimes. <laughs> well, and it's usually the days where you're totally burned out or you're yeah you know you're yeah. exhausted or you know some jerk off on the internet came and trashed a whole bunch of work that you did or something like that, right? And yeah. you lose perspective on, on the difference that you're making or yeah. the payoffs that you're getting or whatever. I spent four days tracking down a single bug in my, my client. You're going to say a single person. You know, a, a single bug <laughs> in my client. Criticize me on Reddit. It was, it was awful. Oh, it's okay. It was, Cut him. It was it was totally a, a, a Josh iOS moment. <laughs> was this for uh, your um, contracting? Yeah, this is for from my, from my oh, giant scheduling yeah. system, and it was it was uh, just. So you have to justify it to somebody else on top of the stress yeah. of debugging it. Yeah, yeah pig farmer. Totally. Yeah, I get totally. it. Totally, pig farmer. <laughs> But, you know, I, where I'm going, I think, is where Josh has mentioned this before, and I think it is totally doable, is right now it's it's nose to the grindstone time. It's 40, 60-hour weeks, right, in, in trying to build up this thing. Mm -hmm. But w if you build up a thing big enough and the snowball is rolling and collecting enough moss, because snowballs collect moss, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to let you roll with it. I was <laughs> you know, if, that, if that's happening uh, if, enough... If moss ball grows... <laughs> You can get to this point where I think you can work the 10 or 20 hour week most of yeah. the time. You've got some employees working you can for live you. Live the lives of Tim Ferriss and have a four hour work week. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> but but you can have you know some people that are working for you that are running most of the business or or it is running a large portion on autopilot. Why? Because you figured out the high leverage activities mm -hmm. that don't require a lot. You know, one good right. example of that for me was I found that blogging course. Right? I mean, that blogging yep. email course is a super super high leverage activity I'm mm -hmm. still generating you know it looks like I'm going to generate like 1500 bucks a month affiliate plus seven thousand dollars a month sales on my course from doing that thing and it doesn't require it can it can pretty much I can almost set that on autopilot like I just have to and I can get someone to answer those emails so right. so I think Josh I think you're right I think that's the goal but but you have to reach a certain level you know right. and I want to say that the level is that you have to be bringing in like you know, a million dollars a year of revenue that that you could get to a point where you could say, well, you know, I could cut back and I could I could work 10 or 20 hours a week and maybe it drops my revenue down to $600,000 a year or 500 and that's more than enough, plenty to, you know, so, you know, but if you're at like, let's say two or $300,000 a year revenue and then you drop back, you know, into like 10 or 20 hour a week, work and then right. it, it drops you down you know because then you, then you start hovering into the danger zone because right. there's this point where if you have so much 
you know income coming in that's more than enough to live that you can't spend it all in a in a, in a you know normal lifestyle then right. you've got this huge but then you've got you can be wasteful almost like you like right. you, you know I mean you don't have to be as efficient you don't have to work every single hour and be super productive like you you're so so it's it's a matter of building a thing big enough where you can kind of draft off of the the results of that thing and then yeah. you know the the fumes is enough to, for for you to live off of if you just wanted to do that right. um, so there's also a phenomenon though where um, like with consulting what I'm gonna what I'm hoping to try to do you know, eventually is um, if you f sort of, if you artificially cut your hours, what you've done is you've cut the supply of you, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you've got enough demand, like if you're able to generate the demand, you can just, you can raise your rates basically just by cutting your hours. And, mm -hmm. you know, people, people, this actually, people actually do this, so. No, I, I did that actually. I, when I was, uh, my very first contract I was billing 40 hours a week. It was hell. It, it was not mm. fun. Trying to actually get 40 billable hours a week is yeah, near impossible. And so for for the next contract, I was like, okay, I can work 25 hours a week. Here's my rate, and I tripled my rate. So I was yeah. making the same money, but I was only working 25 hours a week. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm I'm doing this again. <laughs> let's let's keep it that way. Yeah, it, it's interesting though. One of, one of the things that uh, I was listening to uh, startups for the rest of us, and and uh, the, the last episode, Rob said, uh, Rob Walling, they had asked, he's, they're answering listener questions, and one of them was like, how do you define success or what is success? And and Rob had a really good like thing that he said about. I mean, he 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 kind of defined it, in, but but out, out of after he defined it, he basically said like. The number one thing that you need to do, because I think he, I guess it needs a little context, but he said that success was essentially, uh, and I might, I might forget it now, but, <laughs> but you know, d doing, do uh, having freedom was number one. Right. I think he said number two was uh, was doing something that you care about or or or, or value, um, and then number three I think was relationships. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, when you start out, he said. Focus just on number one. He said, drop number two and three and get number one. And I'm paraphrasing here, but he essentially said, get your freedom first. Because once you get your freedom, you can do something you love or something you're interested about, you know, that, that, or that's, that has purpose. You can find your purpose and you can build the relationships. But number one, getting the freedom, getting your time back is going to be the key thing. And that's, I mean, he talked about it when he was on Entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. But like it really clicked in my head. I was like, this is, you know, this is advice that a lot of people are going to shake their head and say, no, 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 that's not a way to live. But he, but he talked about putting his nose to the grindstone for, Amount of time and and actually reading that millionaire fast lane book that's you know, it's it's a little hypey but yeah but it's, it's a very good book I, yeah I've read that oh have you okay yeah mm -hmm. it's it it is essentially the same message the dude is like look you can retire and you can do this thing for yeah. you know forty years investing in and that's fine you know he called it wheelchair wealth <laughs> wealth yeah. in a wheelchair <laughs> or whatever but but he said like if you want to be successful and like be be wealthy in your while you're young, you're right. just gonna have to like bust your butt for like three years, put your nose to the grindstone, and let a lot of other things drop until you mm -hmm. can buy your freedom. And that's uh, it's just an interesting concept. Like I, I see it so many, so much in the startup community, like of the the successful people that sell their startups and and find it that way, or the bootstrapping right. community where they, you know, where they get to this, and and everyone looks at their lifestyles and they 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 try to replicate. They're like, oh, you know. They, they they don't have to work so many hours per week, but they they miss the key point. Is like there's there's always some some period where someone just like they let all the other priorities drop and they just busted their butt for some period of right. time in order to make it out. Yeah. They bought their freedom. So yeah. yeah yeah he calls it um he says there's no there's there is such a thing as get rich get rich quick but not get rich easy. Right? Yeah. Which is <laughs> not the same thing. But um. So, uh, so I made a decision. I am going to that conference. Awesome! So, High yeah, five! So is, yeah. So this is the. Um, so we talked about this on the mailing list, but this is the. Um, Bob Bly uh, is doing a get getting copywriting clients conference in March, and uh, so I'm gonna go. It's it's in New Jersey, so I, I'm actually gonna drive. I think it's only six hours, and I think to fly into New York, and then like I looked at 
I was thinking about like the cost and everything, and what do you guys think? But I think it would be tough to get like eight like, hours of driving is totally worth driving compared it's to six flying. hours. Yeah, six hours. yeah, yeah. So if, if, no, seriously though, if it's if it's eight eight hours or less, I'll drive okay. without question. Okay. It, it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be cheaper. It's gonna be faster. Yeah, it's gas is stressful. cheap right now. Right. Um, so you know, the gas would be relatively cheap. I, I figure I'd probably pay twenty or thirty bucks for a shuttle to and from the airport anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so I was, thanks for helping me think that through, um, I was really, like, I was really, I, I kept, I wanted, I wanted, I saw the email about it earlier in the week, I archived it, then I went back and I looked at it again, and I starred it in Gmail, and then I unstarred it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I went back to it again, you know, I, I went back, I probably went back to that thing, like, four times, um, and I, so I, I went, I, I, um, I went to the. Uh, I actually read the whole. Like it was a big, huge. Of course, a big, huge. That was a novel. That wasn't a sales page. <laughs> oh no, that's Holy normal. Cow. That's it normal. It sucked me in at the beginning. At my Whoa. in my world, that is completely normal. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have to admit, I got sucked in at the beginning. But as I kept reading, I I glanced at the scroll bar and I saw just how long I was out. <laughs> I, I read the whole I'm thing, out. except for I'm some done. of the testimonials at the end. Because yeah. um, I already know, like, so Bob Bly, like this guy, he is. He's one of the top copywriters, yeah. top living copywriters. The dude has written 80 books. <laughs> um, he's wow. written like one of, I mean, some of the def, the defining books on copywriting. Um, I've I've corresponded with him a little bit via email, so he kind of knows who I am. Um, and he's, his he's assistant just, knows who you are. No, he, I, I, no, he really <laughs> he, he so he's one of the daily emailers, and um, he'll fire back. It's like one liners, like he'll right. say thanks or. Um, he's actually, you know, we've actually had a couple of longer exchanges. Um, no, he does not. This is not his assistant. I'm pretty confident that I'm actually talking to him. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good dude. He's he's this cranky kind of like he's from New Jersey, so he's got this kind of cranky New Jersey exterior. Um, but he's a really nice guy, you know, good family guy, and everything. And the guy that wrote the sales page, um, I actually know who he is. Um, he actually worked for Perry Marshall for a couple of years. And so I'd, I'd heard his story before, and so getting like actually seeing that he actually got his start doing this exact same conference was pretty cool. Because the, the the dude like, I mean he's he's worked for Fortune 500 companies too. Like he's he launched right into it from a standing start, um, and uh, it seems like so it's going to be a small like 60 people. Um, if they're capping at 60 people, and it seems like it's going to be really hands on. Like you know we're going to sit down and like actually figure out. Some of the stuff that I've been struggling with, it seems like they're, you know, I, we're going to kind of work through a lot of that stuff, and then I'll also get more access to Bob afterwards. So, so yeah, yeah, it was it was uh, tough to um, to pull the trigger on <laughs> the price tag, but I think it's going to be yeah, that's be that's good. that's just because you're you're used to the developer mindset of if it's not free, <laughs> it's too expensive. <laughs> Three hundred dollars? You want to spend three? Fourteen dollars for sixty-six episodes <laughs> of awesomeness in screencast? You got to be kidding me! <laughs> well, um, I, yeah, I, got, I got the same thing on JS Remote Conf. I mean, the early bird tickets $50. were fifty bucks, and I had <laughs> I had people emailing me going, "Is there any way I can get this for free?" Because I I just yeah. do you know, fifty bucks, and I'm sitting there going, "You're getting twelve hours of content from some really bright people." Yeah. 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 I mean, honestly, like the solution, a big part of the solution to that is raising your prices, because yeah, yeah. You know, the more, the lower. Actually, it's funny because I'm Bob, already yeah. expensive when it comes to screen. <laughs> Everyone else is charging nine bucks a month. I'm doing fourteen. Um, Bob Act Bob Bly actually talks about this on his email list because he he Maybe sells to twenty four. He sells most of his books for um thirty nine ninety nine, right. and he could easily sell some of this stuff for multiple hundreds of dollars. He just doesn't. And um, he he so he goes off sometimes on his mailing list about somebody like people are always asking how they can get it for free. <laughs> he's like, well, he's there like, can I pay you half? I don't have I don't have thirty nine ninety five, but I have nineteen ninety five. Can I pay you half? And he's like, which half of the book would you like? <laughs> That's, the kind of guy he That's um, awesome. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be, it'll be it'll be. Um, you know, my my inner introvert tends. I've been to one or two other conferences, and I definitely struggled. Now, the last conference I was at was for um, Xamarin, and it was right as we were starting the um, the iOS project that I'm on now. And I didn't 
really have anything that I was working on that was relevant yet. Like I was heading into it, but I didn't have any real problems that we were tackling. Um, so I kind of felt like I was like, uh, I want to talk to people, but I don't really know. I, I don't know much about this yet, and I felt kind of lost the whole time. So I just kind of wandered around like a sad little puppy. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna have any problem as yeah. someone who who who's who's known you for what I guess it's been like three years now since when I was at Trackabout and we were at the DevCon. Yeah, uh, you have come a, a super long way in terms of being more extroverted in personality. <laughs> I mean, you're doing this podcast, right? You you send emails, right? I mean, yeah, all the all the time now. You call up clients and talk to them, right? I mean, you really all you got to do is just put yourself in business mode. Yeah, you I, t- I, tell yourself you're at work. This is yeah. business. You're 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 talking to clients. Yeah, I, I think it's just gonna come. I mean, it's just gonna be like you're gonna they're gonna have to shut you up. They'll be like, there's this one dude that just he wouldn't shut up. Like he just kept on talking to 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 Bob and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really want. I think I actually my odds are pretty good because it's gonna be sixty people. And yeah. they're, they're going to be a bunch of introverted writers, right? Right. So, <laughs> so I've got a pretty good chance to uh, to get some face time with them, and I'm going to try to to maximize that. Yeah. No, this would be good. I didn't realize it was only sixty people, so that that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Be, I know. thought this yeah. was like a big giant conference thing. No, no he cuts it off because he he actually even imposed better. that cap right. because he wants it to be you know small group. Yeah, and he can actually work with people. So and even better. This is probably the last time he's doing this too. So, and like um, I said on the on the list too, like if it's if you can wait and you can say if it's a total flop and a waste of money, and I learn something not not you know not from it, but learn something as what not to do. If there's like mm-hmm. a, a a hard lesson that you could come up with a takeaway, then that's sort of like a discount off of the price, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. Because yep. I've done stupid things where I wasted money on something, but it saved me from. I mean, here's a really good example, right? I I I bought uh, I put a down payment on this fourplex for for ten thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. And the bill, and you know, I didn't do my due diligence on it. And some people warned me, I don't know if this builder is so reputable. Like, you sure we're going to put ten thousand dollars down on this? You know, for the earnest money and, and things like that. And it's like, oh no, no, that's you know. Someone's not gonna, you know, screw you for ten grand for, you know, this is you assume or whatever, and and I got screwed for ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what ended up happening is is uh, the 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 it was at a bad time. Even if I would have gotten that that fourplex built, it would have it was right at like two thousand eight, huh. and, oh, man. and I would have been screwed. You know, uh, you know. And and I learned like it was a ten thousand dollar lesson that saved me from because mm-hmm. I've invested more than ten thousand dollars now in real estate projects mm-hmm. um, that I have and I've walked away from some. So mm-hmm. it was better to pay that money and learn that lesson than to to play it at the at, in the bigger game, pay a larger sum of money and mm-hmm. learn right. a larger lesson. So that's that's where I, I'd say you know if if you're in, ever in that opportunity then. You know, and you're not sure. At least you can weigh that and say, well, you know, if I pay this and I essentially got ripped off, will it have been something that I learned that would save me from paying a much larger price somewhere down the line? Because you've yeah. got to figure out, you know, when I bought those speakers out of that that truck, you know, that for 150 dollars, <laughs> right? I learned something. That Rolex, that, that Rolex I bought for for 25 dollars, <laughs> and it didn't even have a laser in it. <laughs> right, but but you learn. I mean, those are you know some people say it's stupid and a waste of money, but those are le- lessons that you yeah. you learn when you if you've ever done one of those stupid mail order like stuffing envelope things that you pay 150 bucks and they tell you how to get rich quick. I've done that. I learned you know it, it taught me <laughs> something. You know, it didn't make me any money. It didn't teach me anything about making money from stuffing envelopes, but it, but it showed me you know. As as a warning, so I don't know. Yeah. There's there's definitely you, that you can that. make money by selling people something to make money with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Eight, oh, come on, nobody does that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't. I didn't have. I don't have a lot of. I'm not. I'm definitely not worried that this conference is, you know, not what it's not what it's promised. I think what my main worry would be that it would be too basic for me, or, you know, or the, or that I would just be a bunch of information and I would just end up not implementing it. Uh, I yeah. think those are the two the main things that I'm that I would be worried about because that's a lot of money to spend to be entertained for a weekend. 
I but can't tell you how many times, though, I've seen somebody like Amy Hoy say, I just spent $1,200 on these you know, two hours worth of screencasts, and right. it was the best money I've ever spent because right. I got all this information, and yeah. now I can go do these things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I see people see people in, in, in those kinds of positions talking about spending 2500 bucks, $5,000 for, mm-hmm. for, for books and screencasts. Yeah. Not, <clears throat> not to be there in person, not to have a chance to talk to the person in real life, not to have that workshop experience, but just for the information. Right. There's a really good copywriting course that I, want, well, I will buy someday that's five grand. Yeah. I'm not buying yeah. it right now. <laughs> and like that, I mean... Worth it. Like right. next week, I'll be paying five hundred bucks to talk to Ryan Holiday for thirty minutes. Right. My, you know, if he gives me one idea that that will help me sell five hundred more books, which yeah. probably he will have at if, least if, one if of those. If he helps you sell, you know, two more of your your course. Right. You know? I it, mean, it pays for it. So. So anyway, and plus, it's, you know, you're making a connection to yeah. some degree. Like if you go to Bob Singh and only 60 people are signing up, he knows who those 60 people are, mm-hmm. especially if you've already yep. been communicating with them. I figured the same thing with Ryan Holiday. It's like, okay, I've talked to this guy on the phone. That's, you know, that's that it's it's a, it's a connection. Like you can yeah. further that. But, you know, so so I think there's, there's just some value in just the connection side of it. And, and like you said, you've got that refund policy on your on your thing. So if after two days you know that it's like, oh, I already know all this stuff. I'm not making any connections. It's not worth it. Then don't be afraid to ask for your money back and go home. Right, yeah. right, so. right. Yep. They're probably going to pull a John on you, though, and make you sit down for an hour and talk to him about why you didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> what if we gave so you this other you, thing that yeah, you don't want? Do <laughs> you want $5 back or this free copy of... Which <laughs> one on the couch? It's, Tell me about your father. <laughs> How did that make you feel, Josh? <laughs> oh man, so that's pretty much that's been the highlight of my week. I would have to say, um, I am working on doing. So I'm working with um, Sean. Uh, I think it's his name is Fiorito. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but he's uh, <clears throat> we're doing. He's the author of the Sketching with CSS mm. book, oh, and cool. he, he he guest posted on Nathan. He's like a Nathan Barry uh, case study and stuff. So. We're gonna do a webinar. He's doing a webinar for his book, and I'm promoting it this this week and next week on my list. So nice. what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna I'm trying a little different this time. So instead of doing like the solo ad thing like we did for John, um, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm advertising it twice in the weekly newsletter. So we're gonna run it like a regular ad, and then I'm tagging everyone who clicks on that. So even if they don't register, I can follow up with them. Yeah. So we've got we we did the first one went out yesterday and we've gotten like it got a lot of clicks I got like um I, last time I checked I got almost 700 clicks on the ad nice so I will follow up with those people um, I'm also gonna do I am gonna do like a solo ad style email but it's gonna be like sublime content and then a pitch at the end and I'm gonna try to single out because this is for designers so I'm gonna try to single out designers um, some some sublime thing for more designer rather than coder types. Um, so this is this is going to be a very interesting experiment. And then he's going to, Sean's going to do all the follow-up to pitch. He's got like a, his court, his uh, his book is like, he's got like tiers, and I think the top one is like two, 250 or $300. Yeah. So yeah, so this will be, this will be pretty interesting. Um, so that'll be, I think uh, we're doing the webinar on the 20, on February 25th. So. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 just gonna have to try to do some experiments to figure out like what what I can get away with basically <laughs> like what what I don't mind the backlash like the um I don't mind a few angry emails what's really scared me though John about what we did was the huge drop off I saw in the open rate and now I'm still not sure what to make of that because the one that I sent out yesterday like the so we did um West wrote a, a really good subject line so I, I'm looking at my numbers now and I had Two weeks where I was at right around 28%, which is for my list is very low. Um, this is right after the the email ad went out, and then uh, Wes wrote that is Sublime Text dead headline uh, subject line, and that got almost a 40% open rate, it's a 38.5. And then this week it was not as not a very good subject line, um, but now we're back. It's been 24 hours and we're back to like around 24. So I don't know. Like I kind of feel like I did do some permanent damage there.
but it's like it's not. It, I don't know. Like it's, it's. I wonder what that open rate would have been on is Sublime Text dead if I hadn't sent the ad out. You know, it might have been higher. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a couple ways to think about this. One of them is, um, <clears throat> what good is having this list if you can't monetize it? Exactly. Yeah. So you get you got it. Otherwise, it's just you know burning. Right. It's burning up money every month. Right. And, and then, I mean, you can't really know know the answer to this. Someone who I would talk to that maybe you could actually get five or ten minutes with or fifteen minutes is Noah Kagan because you're running the exact same business that he is at a, at a lower scale. I mean, not the exact same, but but pretty dang close because, um, and and you and yours is more of a of a well. Like, uh, if you can somehow make it a stream into the well or, or to the pool, right? Um, going back to the the analogy, yeah. but. Um, but essentially because you have this group of people and they're going to get exhausted of what you're doing eventually. Like it's going to happen. Right, more people right. are going to drop off. Like you can't stop that. So you got to get more people coming back in, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't know how you do that except for well, having deals that people spread. Like AppSumo is able to do that because mm -hmm. it's like people spread the deals and then, and then, and then you know, you're interested yeah. in and want to see what their deals are. So right. I don't know. I mean, eventually you're, it's either going to, you're either going to have to figure out some way, long-term sustainability of renewing the, you know, refreshing it, getting more people into that. Right. Or you're just going to have to realize that you're going to run this thing into the ground and, uh, <laughs> and what's the best Cash way to up. run this into the ground. Yeah. And, and make the most money when you need well, to do that. Yeah. It's def So there's definitely, um, so I'm getting, I, I still get a pretty good number of signups every month. Like I get like around 300 new subscribers per month, which isn't, isn't much when you compare it to 74,000. <laughs> it's a whole um, lot when you compare it to my, 10 or 20. But, yeah. you, but you lose more than 300, right? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's going to happen for a long time. Right. Like my list will continue to shrink. Oh, I can run, I can run more giveaways. Yeah. There's, yeah. I don't know that, that, that there's a long ways before the, um, you know, the, the curve goes the other way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I can run, I can run some more giveaways and I'll probably do that at some point. Um, what I really want to do at some point here, I'm, I'm thinking maybe, maybe sometime this summer is try to carve out a few weeks and actually finish my book and relaunch it. Yep. Um, and that would be, I could probably generate another nice little one fall of like, I don't know, 10 or 15 grand doing that. Um, and then I also need to get, um, Wes and I have been working slowly on getting uh, Edgar going because I haven't been tweeting. I have 32,000 Twitter followers and there are no tweets going out right now. Wow, yeah. So I need to get a, an Edgar library built up, yeah. and that if I get that going, and then I have like even just one or two email courses, or just like a you know get on the weekly newsletter tweet that goes out three or four times a week, I'll get another two three hundred subscribers a month out of that easily. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you could chart it on an Excel sheet right now and just see where it'll be. Because if you look at like what your attrition rate is versus right. how much you're climbing, you're going to figure out that oh, I'm going to I'm going to hit a uh, stabilization point around twenty thousand subscribers, and yeah. I'll always yeah. hang in that zone. But right. I mean, right now you're going to be going down until you hit. Yeah. You'll know what that pool is. Right. But um, but yeah, it's, it's I don't know. It's it's an interesting. An interesting problem to have. I wonder too if you did more sublime giveaways. Like you might as well try it again. Yeah, I will. I will. If, if I it just, works again, that'd be. I need. I need to be able to focus on it. That's the thing. Like, cause yeah. I mean, that was a pretty big. If it happens again like that, that's kind of a. It was a big chunk of time to deal with the the fallout and then deal with like, oh, now I have to go through here and spend half of Saturday cleaning this list up and. Yeah. I don't right now. I just don't have the bandwidth for that. So, because I'm writing like a fiend. <laughs> I wrote so okay. So my mentor this week. So he he's doing webinars to promote his um his copywriting class that he's launching, and uh, so on. Is that Monday? Yeah, on Monday he pings me. He's like, "Hey, got a second? I was like, "Oh boy." <laughs> Whenever I get one of those, you know, it's always like, "Okay, here we here it comes." So um, he wanted me to do a report to basically take his webinar and convert it into a report that he could give away and he's like oh yeah this is you know it's not this is not too too bad i want you know, i want it to be like this so he emails me a pdf i open it up it's 62 pages long he's like i was like oh my gosh <laughs> he's like what i was like when do you need this he's like thursday thursday morning <laughs> Oh, oh, no, he's God. like he wanted it wednesday yeah. and it was monday it was monday afternoon i'm like okay well, how about Thursday morning? 
Yeah. And uh, so I yes, I actually got it. I got it done. It was it ended up being forty two pages long, and there was some Ooh, graphics yeah. in there. And like I mean, it wasn't all me writing, but it was like me taking bullet points basically and fleshing it out. And uh, so I'm actually getting a lot faster at writing. This is yeah. I, I've not been I've not been uh, I've not been pushing back on him to give me more time, even though like everything in me is like wants to do that, because I know that like I'm my tolerance level for these big assignments is going up and up and up, and yeah. I need that right now. Mm -hmm. So I need you know. Yeah, no, that's a good. I think that's a good strategy, good yeah. philosophy to have. So you're going to benefit in the long Bring run. Bring on the pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I haven't. I I I haven't yet. Uh, I haven't yet. Well, I think I. There was one time when I was like a day late on an assignment, but I told him ahead of time that it was going to happen because I saw it coming, and he was cool with it. It was a pretty big assignment, so. Other than that, I've hit. I, I, there was like the last one he had me doing. A, a, it ended up being like a eight thousand word video sales letter, and I kept pinging him. I'm like, I can't get this done. I can't get this done. I can't get this done. And the deadline comes. And I'm like, here it is. <laughs> yep. All done. So. Oh, by the way, guys, what do you guys think about uh, using Slack? I don't. I, okay, I, I have an I opinion. Hear a lot about, about it, but I I don't know what it is. I have I a like strong it. opinion about this. Okay. Um, so I don't want to replace our mailing list with it. Okay. For a couple reasons. Um, for one thing, you have to pay for uh, the full archives. So, so it's, okay. it's free. It's free to use, but you only get like 10,000 lines of history. Yeah. So you can is search it. Chat it, rooms you... or something? Yeah, it's a chat. It's chat room. No, yeah. I don't want chat rooms. Chat, I mean, chat rooms are good for 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 closer to real time communication. Yeah. But the the stuff we do is not chat room communication. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would. I think it would. Uh, it would make it harder for us to carry on the kinds of conversations yeah. that we have. Well, you can drop files and images and all that. Is it? I it's mean, pretty cool. I mean, I like it as a as a chat room. It's the best one I've tried. I really like it. And you can do mark. It supports markdown formatting, so you can copy and paste code. Mm -hmm. um, it gets got a lot of cool stuff. Like it pulls in, you know, if you paste in a web page, it pulls in a summary, and you know, it's it's pretty nice. It's like way better than HipChat, which is what we use right, right now. But yeah, so I don't it's, think... it's it's along the lines of HipChat, though. Yes. Okay, because yes. I, mm -hmm. I used HipChat. We used HipChat a lot at, at Telerik, and mm -hmm. loved HipChat for you know day to day, every day, constant conversation, you know, real time kind of stuff where you got a question. You ask your your team a question and somebody answers, you know, a minute later or something. But it's not, it's it's stream of conscious stuff. Oh, I see. And, yeah. and what we do is really, you know, it's we we have conversations, but they are longer conversations with thought out replies, not stream right. of conscious style. Yeah. And plus, but, I like having all the search search. Yeah, I I go back to our archives and our mailing list a lot. Yep. So, so let me ask you this then, because um, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, and, and I avoid chat programs as much as possible because I hate chat programs. Yeah. In fact, I need to do it. <laughs> I've been meaning to do a YouTube video saying, do not message me on Facebook, do not message me on chat. It's not that I don't like you or that I'm trying to be mean. It's that I don't even want my wife to ping me on, on <laughs> chat. Um, uh, you know, obviously there's exceptions at different times, but yeah, another for yeah, all another those times that I've pinged you on IM, you see them <laughs> swearing at me. Like, Damn it, Derek! Ah! Well, there, there's certain times where I mean, in, as a general policy, right? Like out of the blue, every once in a while, you ping someone on chat because there's a real good reason why, because you right. need something now, or you, you know. But um, so, so there's another thing that uh, called P2. Have you guys heard of P2? Uh -huh. I'm I'm taking this from the founder of WordPress, uh, Matt. I can't remember his last name, but well, he was talking about that. Yeah, they were using Matt Slack. WordPress. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> Matt WordPress. Matt, yeah. and he's the guy who created WordPress right. essentially. Uh, but they use P2 for their internal communication and Slack. And P2 is more of the like standing document thing. But I don't hmm. know. Take a look at P2 you guys and see what you think because I feel like we could do a little bit better than the Google groups uh, and, and and have something that's a little easier to search and, and go through because a lot of times 
what happens. The the biggest problem I have with our Google groups right now is that like it's not when you reply to an email, sometimes the threading is kind of messed up because it's like, well, you know, I don't know, you, you, and it's hard to see like who's replied and what they've said. So maybe it's like you know, Derek sent an email and Josh replied, and I want to comment on what Josh said, but I want it to be in the context of the whole thing. And so it's, I don't know, it's a little bit harder to do that with email. We need to bring back Google Wave. <laughs> yeah, Google Wave. <laughs> oh my gosh, Google Wave. Yeah. So P two is that the movie about the psychopath that stalks some woman in parking garage two? Is <laughs> Let it go. That, that's Let what I came go. up with when I searched for P two. It's a movie. Oh. There's, I, don't, I don't know what this P two thing is that you're you're I, suggesting. It, it, I think it's P two theme dot com. Oh, okay. P two theme dot com. Right. There's that one. <laughs> yeah, it, M- no, Matt okay. Mullenweg. Right. M- Mullen Mullenweg. Yeah. You did I better when you didn't know his. You didn't have when you weren't looking at his name. Just you call him Matt WordPress. <laughs> his name is Matt WordPress, right? Because just just like Joe Twitter and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's worth looking into to figure out. I, you know, I'm I'm just trying to think of some more efficient ways to, to do things rather than email. We all just have to move to Pittsburgh and meet face to face. There we go. Because of all the places we live, Pittsburgh would be the one to go. That's exactly why I said yeah. Pittsburgh. <laughs> and then, and then we can make a road trip to Jersey for a sixty-person conference. Mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. It's not Youngstown, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta we gotta start talking more about this retreat too, entrepreneurs yes. retreat and plan. I know. I really want to do that. We need sponsors to help us. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I don't even care if it's in the middle of a cornfield in Kansas. I think it'd be yeah. fun. And hey, my parents are, are in town, and they, they live in Kansas. And Kansas is not corn. It's wheat. Uh, <laughs> if you want corn, you got to go to Iowa. Yeah. So you you to lose me. So, man. But maybe, maybe we should plan out a date line and, and like, ten, tentative date and then come up with So that kind of puts it on our schedule of, like, uh-huh. What 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 we want to do because it'd be really cool. I, I I like Chuck's idea of having like you know people come and they can join us and we'll you know. When we'll is Josh's some... baby due? Um, well we're due mid April. Mid April. So, yeah. so we should have it like April tenth then. We should do this. <laughs> <laughs> that would be about right. And I am in Europe until I'll be in Europe all summer, pretty much uh, June, July, August. I think I'm coming back in September. Mm. So I could, I mean, we could do something in the in the September, October, November, somewhere around there. I'm gonna do mm-hmm. January in Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was I was thinking that it might be fun to do like a beach house in September or October. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. The. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I, I mean, I think we could rent something out that's you know basically like rent something out for a week, where essentially the first three days or so, or maybe and maybe the first three days or so, we we sell tickets for people to come and join us. And we just like do kind of maybe we have some mini talks and stuff, and we just kind of hang out with with uh, with fellow entre programmers, share ideas mm-hmm. and stuff. And then like the remaining couple of days or so, like Chuck was saying, we fly in our families and we you know just have just like hang out. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could make it two weeks long, and then people could come for the evening for like an hour. Right? Yes, an hour at night. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go back to bed. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, I, I think I mean we we could get some some may, well we'll put it out here for this episode if you're listening to Entre Programmers if you're interested we probably wouldn't do something like in in Europe at least not for the well, well first off if you're interested send us five hundred dollars each and then <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll think about maybe giving you a ticket to something that we're haven't planned yet. I think we'd probably do like I, I would imagine maybe we'd have like ten slots at five hundred dollars each. That might make sense, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. that'll help offset the costs for us to be able to put this on, and then you know, 
I think that that would probably make sense. Something around the week week time frame, maybe mm-hmm. three days for for attendees. Uh, but, but I don't know. I mean, if if you're interested, leave a comment on the on the episode, or or mm-hmm. uh, that's probably the best thing to do. Or email us if you don't want to publicly leave a comment. For Most something. importantly, though, leave a comment on the episode about my singing skills. <laughs> <laughs> How much you love hearing me sing. How you want me to sing more. Oh, Derek's gonna have a bad week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the internet hates me. I quit. <laughs> uh, it's okay, right. Derek. Just let it go. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Rock you on. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Catch Start you next week. Next week. Yep. Take care. Bye. Wanna start a business, but you just know how to code. Listen to the young programmers, and we'll teach you straight up to be developing yours. <laughs>